Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and today I'm going to be teaching you about why you should read your Bible. For those of you who do believe that there's a God, and that we didn't just magically appear here by accident, and that there is intelligent life that is beyond our comprehension, and for those of you who do believe that the God of the Bible is true, and that Jesus died for your sins, and if you don't, let me teach you about that. So, here is sin. A representation of just darkness right and here is how we were originally designed perfect and holy you can see through the cup right you can see through the water you know that's a representation of like love now if sin is corrosive and nasty and vile then God is holy who's clean and pure when sin entered the world, we became dirty and vile. You can't even see through it. And that's how we were originally created. We were created perfect. But then when we sinned, we became disgusting and nasty. And not only that you can see it, we even feel it. Well, that's the amazing thing about God's love for us, that he sent his only son in the likeness of himself to come into a sinful world and to cleanse it of its impurities. So what I have for you today is a little example, uh, illustration, so you can finally see um, why it's important to repent and why it's important to read your Bible. If I take the sin and I, and I lie, let's just say once, in my entire life, Okay? And let's say that this represents a burden. And I pour this in. I just lied a little bit. That was it. Okay, let's say I stole something. Let's say um, I gossiped. You see where I'm going here now, right? Okay, let's just say that I uh, talked bad about my neighbor or anyone, or my parents, anyone at all, or myself. Okay, let's say that I start to believe lies and I start to tell lies and so on and so forth. You get the idea. The concept is this. If there is no God, then this is totally irrelevant. It doesn't matter what you do. You can do whatever you want. No one's going to hold you accountable. We just made up all these rules. However, if there is a God, and it's the God of the Bible, then this is what starts to happen to our life. And this is the person that we start to become. And this is what Jesus says, these people will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Well, guess what? All of us have sinned. All of us has fallen short of the holy, perfect Lord. Because... No matter what we do in this life, it can't cleanse us. You can buy all the fancy things you want. You can, you know, do all the good deeds you want in this world. But nothing is going to wash you away from the guilt of all your sin and your junk. Masturbation. Sex outside of marriage. All these guidelines that the Old Testament teaches us about what God approves and what he doesn't approve. Now... None of us are perfect. We've all fallen short of every single one of these, and we do it daily. So when you sin, the guilt and the burden just keeps going up and up and up and up, and you feel more ashamed, you feel more guilty, more persecuted, and you feel more weight upon your life. And this is where we also get suicide, and this is where we get murder. So, okay, no one's perfect. So how do I get this clean? Right? How do I clean myself if I'm filthy, if I've become like dirty rags to God? Because God is perfect and he's holy. 
right? And you can't enter his presence looking like this because he pays attention to the heart and the mind. He says, I let you wander off into lies and worship other gods that tell you that they will satisfy, that they, that they are actually gods when they're not gods, they're idols, worshiping an idol. And he says that everyone does it and you guys do it daily. You guys, are so, you guys aren't even aware of God's law or the God of the Bible. And it's in your nature to sin. So your, your nature is just pure evil every day. Just you don't even know how to think a good thought. You try to think a good thought as if you are good, but you're not. He says no one's good. Out of their youth, they are prideful and evil and contentious. They don't love their neighbor. They don't love their father. They don't obey anyone. They're constantly rebellious, gossips, monglers, and da, 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 so on and so forth. These are in accordance to the rules that God has set. But God, in his great mercy, wasn't finished with us, even though we just kept sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning. That's terrible, if you ask me. I'm doing this illustration because I, it helped me a lot in my walk. It helped me come to Christ and Jesus. And you guys are living in so much sin, so much burden. And you don't feel loved because sin separates you from love. And this is not love. Getting drunk is not love. Gossip is not love. Hating each other, lying, stealing, that's not love. That's the world's definition of love. That's Satan's definition of love. But let me teach you about real love. Real love came down from heaven. Now let's represent this as a, as a child. I know it's really huge, but I need this to finish the illustration. This is Jesus. This is God's love inside of Jesus. And when you read the Gospels, it shows you who God is. And it shows you who his love is and who he shows mercy and compassion to. He says anyone who is filthy and acknowledges that they're guilty and they're a sinner and they're dirty, I will clean them. Let's represent these as people or you and me. Anyone who wants to be washed by my blood, I will wash them. And when I wash them, they will return to the original design that I had planned for them. But the only thing that can wash you is not the knowledge or wisdom of this world. It's nothing in the world. The only thing that can wash you is Jesus and his blood that he shed for you. That he is willing to cleanse any of you in your impure thoughts and your impure heart. If you acknowledge that you're a sinner and you need a savior, you need help. And he's saying anyone who humbles themselves, because this is pride, Self, self-righteousness. You guys are right in your own eyes. You think you're always right. Anyone who acknowledges the God of the Bible, the Holy Bible, not other Bibles or Testaments. I will wash them with my blood. I will purify them. I will cleanse them of their wickedness. If you come to me and repent, get on your knees and say, I need a savior. Jesus, come into my life. I surrender. And I will show you that I am God. But if you don't, if I had another cup, you would just get more filthy, more guilty, like Judas, and kill yourself or do something horrific that we've all seen in this world. But if you acknowledge a God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That anyone who believes what he did on the cross 
will be cleansed. He will be saved and he will have rest. And the burden of this life and all the sins that he or she committed, I will forgive and I will remember no more. All those guilty things and thoughts that you think of is because God remembers them. And he's convicting you at this moment to say you're sorry. The law shows us our sins. But if you want mercy and grace, because you won't get it from this world, you won't get it from anyone. The only time, the only person you can get it from is, is Jesus. I will forgive you. And at this moment, I'm going to show you what Jesus did for you unconditionally. This world has an infinite amounts of conditions. We even have conditions in ourselves that we can't live up to. We can't live up to our own conditions of our expectations, our standards. We can't even live up to the world's standards. We always fall short of everyone's standards, including God's standards. And therefore we change our standards. But God never changes. And he is holy and perfect. And he loves you so much that he sent his only son. He wants to teach you and he wants to adopt you into his kingdom. Not as your father or your mother who left you or that they're not perfect. He wants to adopt you. He wants to be your true father and your guardian, your savior, your friend, your everything you need anytime you need him. His love poured out for you every day. The fact that you woke up today was a gift. And he gave you the gift of forgiveness. And he even gave you his Holy Spirit if you accept and if you believe and if you surrender every day. Now, here is what Jesus did for you. Now, this is a representation of Jesus, his body, his blood that was poured out and sacrificed for you. This is also a representation of his word is a representation of the new covenant which washes away guilt and shame. For this is so much how God loved you. You're a sinner and he's holy and pure and loving and he's filled with it. This is eternal. I know I only have a picture or whatever this is, but God is eternally loving and eternally forgiving. There has to be a law in order to be forgiven of that law. And your conscience bears witness that there is truth. You feel bad when you do bad and you feel good when you do good. And if you say, God, I'm sorry for lying. I'm sorry for stealing. I'm sorry for gossiping and cheating my neighbor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all the bad things that I do and I do daily. I'm sorry for worshiping idols, worshiping myself, stealing, doing all these evil things. I'm sorry. Help me. I will follow you every day of my life. I want to be clean. I don't want a burden in my life. I want to know you. I want to be restored. I want to feel loved. Clothe me in your righteousness. Clothe me and sanctify me. For you are good and you are God. And he doesn't run out. We run out of strength, of love, compassion, and joy, and goodness. But he never runs out. And he will pour into your life every day. If you want him to. And you will be restored back to who you're supposed to be. Only under his will when you surrender yours every day. And this is what it means to worship the real God. He wants you to see this. Read your Bible. Pray. Look for him. Seek him in his word try to please him do everything you can because he's the only one who can really satisfy you and love you 
the way only he knows how because he created you. There's not one thing that he did not create except sin. God cannot sin because he's good and he's holy and righteous. Repent of your sin. Lying, stealing, masturbation, gossip, talking badly about one another. All of these things are sin. Coveting, wanting what your neighbor has. Lusting with your eyes. Sins, sins, sins. So if you guys see something in me and say, wow, there's something different about him, it's because I get my sins forgiven. I ask him to forgive me every day. I ask him to help me every day. I read my Bible every day. And he nourishes me. I sin, yes, every day, just like anyone else. But I know what is a sin and what isn't a sin. Because I've been taught what right and wrong is. What true right and wrong is. The world will teach you what right and wrong is. And that's not what right and wrong is according to God, the God that I worship. And if you want your sins forgiven, he will teach you what right and wrong is. The world has redefined what right and wrong is in their own eyes. We don't need mental institutions. We don't need all these things and places. We need the Bible. We need God. We need forgiveness. I hope you guys got something out of this message today. And I hope that you guys will repent. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Teach me guide me and he will I thank you for watching and this is a message that's been long overdue I know you guys are curious I know you want to know what's that oomph that I got huh I read my Bible and I have a relationship with Jesus and I repent so I encourage you not to be like I am, but to do like I do. Read your Bible. Get to know the God of the Bible, the Holy Bible. No other Bible or testaments. The Bible. Repent of your sins. Stay tuned for this, these sermons. Not that my sermons will save you or anything, but... Be around people who can teach you is what I'm saying, who this God is. But not everyone is who they say they are. So that's why I say you have to be cautious of what churches you go to, and who's trying to teach you, because the enemy will come and deceive many. But I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly. I thank you so much and I love you guys. God bless.